The iconic music of Irene Cara in the final audition of Flashdance cost her everything. Irene Cara was born Irene Cara Escalera on March 18, 1959, in the Bronx, New York City, and emerged as one of the most dynamic talents of her generation. From a young age, Cara demonstrated a natural flair for performance, captivating audiences with her voice, acting, and dancing abilities. She was the youngest of five children in a working-class Puerto Rican and Cuban-American family, and her parents nurtured her artistic passions from an early age. By the time she was just a child, she had already gained recognition, appearing on Spanish-language television shows and taking voice and piano lessons. This early training helped set the foundation for a career that would eventually make her a global star. Cara's first significant foray into show business was in the late 1960s and early 1970s, when she appeared on various television shows, including the famed children's show, The Electric Company. This exposure allowed her to hone her skills and build confidence as a performer. Her natural talent did not go unnoticed, and by the age of 13, she had starred in a Broadway musical called Maggie Flynn. This marked the beginning of what would be a successful and varied career in entertainment. Irene Cara's breakthrough role came in the 1980 film Fame. Cast as Coco Hernandez, a passionate, driven student at New York City's High School of Performing Arts, Cara showcased her triple-thread talents in singing, acting, and dancing. The film's themes of dreams, ambition, and the struggles of making it in the competitive world of entertainment resonated deeply with audiences. Cara's portrayal of Coco was raw and emotional, blending vulnerability with resilience, and it instantly struck a chord with viewers around the globe. More than just her acting, Irene Cara's voice became the anthem of fame, both the film and its legacy. The title song, Fame, which she performed, became an international hit, topping charts worldwide. Its empowering lyrics, I'm gonna live forever, I'm gonna learn how to fly, spoke to the spirit of determination and hope that defines every artist's journey. Cara's performance of the song earned her widespread acclaim and a place in pop culture history. The song went on to win an Academy Award for Best Original Song and became an iconic anthem for those striving to achieve their dreams. Cara's career reached even greater heights in 1983 when she lent her voice to another cinematic hit, Flashdance. Her performance of the song Flashdance, What a Feeling became one of the defining moments of her career. Written by Giorgio Moroder, Keith Forsey, and Cara herself, the song was the perfect accompaniment to the film's story of a young woman pursuing her passion for dance while working as a welder. The song's pulsating rhythm, coupled with Cara's powerful vocals, made it an instant classic. Flash Dance, what a feeling topped the charts in several countries, and like fame, it earned Cara numerous accolades, including a Grammy Award for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance and an Academy Award for Best Original Song. The song not only solidified Irene Cara's position as a pop music icon but also as one of the few artists to achieve such phenomenal success in both film and music. Irene Cara, an iconic figure in the music and film industry, achieved global fame for her work in flash dance and fame, especially with the song What a Feeling. However, behind her meteoric rise and success lay a story of personal sacrifices, health struggles, and eventual tragedy. Cara's role in Flashdance is often remembered as the pinnacle of her career. The movie's theme song, Flashdance, What a Feeling, which she co-wrote and performed, became an international hit, winning an Academy Award, a Golden Globe, and a Grammy. Despite the glittering accolades, Cara's professional journey in the entertainment industry was fraught with challenges. After her success, Cara found herself embroiled in a long and exhausting legal battle with her record label, Network Records, over unpaid royalties. She had earned millions of dollars from her music, but most of the revenue went unaccounted for, and her legal fight lasted almost a decade. Although she ultimately won the lawsuit and was awarded damages, the lengthy dispute severely affected her career, both financially and professionally. The stress of the case, along with the industry's harsh retaliation, blacklisting her from many future opportunities, had a profound impact on her personal well-being and career trajectory. In the years that followed, Cara's once prominent career faded into the background. She continued to work in the entertainment industry, but her output was sporadic, and she never quite regained the superstar status she once held. 
The industry's betrayal, combined with the financial and emotional toll of the lawsuit, left her disillusioned with the very profession that had brought her so much joy and recognition. While her contribution to Flashdance remains iconic, Kara's personal and professional life was irrevocably altered by the events that followed the release of the film. The very song that had brought her fame and accolades ultimately led to her downfall in an industry known for its fickleness and cutthroat nature. Irene Carr's personal life was as tumultuous as her professional one. She married stuntman and film director Conrad Palmisano in a private ceremony in Los Angeles on April 13, 1986. Palmisano was known for his work in Hollywood action films, and together, the couple was a glamorous match, frequently attending red carpet events and public functions. However, behind the scenes, their marriage was troubled. Though the couple had no children, they faced personal strains that led to their eventual divorce in 1991, just five years after their wedding. Their separation marked a difficult chapter in Kara's life, adding emotional turmoil to the already mounting pressure she faced in her career. In the years following her divorce, Kara largely stepped away from the spotlight. Although she continued to create music and run her production company, Caramel Productions, her visibility in the mainstream entertainment industry significantly diminished. As her career quieted down, Kara's health began to deteriorate. She was diagnosed with diabetes, a chronic illness that affected her overall well-being. Additionally, she suffered from hypercholesterolemia, which led to arteriosclerotic and hypertensive heart disease. These underlying health conditions worsened over time and she battled these issues privately while continuing to work on small-scale projects and managing her company. In her later years, Irene Cara chose to live a more reclusive life away from the entertainment industry's glare. She became a resident of Florida, residing in Largo, a suburban city near the Gulf Coast. Though she lived quietly, she maintained her business endeavors, operating her company, Caramel Productions, out of Newport Ritchie, a nearby town. Despite her health issues, Kara continued to hold on to her passion for music and production, using her company to manage smaller creative projects. However, her health challenges eventually caught up with her, and on November 25, 2022, at the age of 63, Kara passed away in her home due to arteriosclerotic and hypertensive heart disease, compounded by her struggles with hypercholesterolemia and diabetes. Her death marked the end of a legacy built on talent but it also highlighted the personal costs that came with her fame. Though Kara faced personal, professional, and health struggles, her influence on the music and entertainment industry remains enduring. The iconic songs she performed for fame and flash dance became cultural touchstones, inspiring generations of musicians, dancers, and performers. Despite the industry's treatment of her and the legal battles that marred her career, Kara left behind an indelible mark reminding us that behind the scenes of success often lies a more complex and challenging narrative. In her final years, Irene Cara may have lived out of the public eye, but her contributions to music, particularly the anthems that defined the 1980s, continue to resonate with fans around the world. Her story serves as both a cautionary tale of the sacrifices artists often make for their craft and a celebration of a life devoted to music and artistic expression.